Welcome to Intermediate Financial Accounting 1, Tutorial 11. In this tutorial, we will look at recognizing revenue on unprofitable long-term construction contracts under both the percentage of completion approach and the completed contract approach. There are four learning objectives for this tutorial. First, to review the calculation of gross profit of an unprofitable contract under the percentage of completion and completed contract approaches. Second, to prepare journal entries for an unprofitable contract, again under both approaches. Third, to prepare partial balance sheet and income statements for the relevant long-term construction accounts under both completed contract and percentage of completion approaches. And fourth, to review the classification of recognized revenues in excess of billings. This is something new that we have not seen in the previous tutorials on long-term construction projects, and we will see when this arises. This tutorial is based on the Putty Inc. C example. Please be sure to download the correct file so you can follow along. The data has been changed in the years 2021 and 2022. Uh, requirement one will be to work under the percentage of completion approach to determine the construction revenues, expenses, and gross profit to be recognized, the journal entries required, and the partial balance sheets and income statements. Requirement two also will have the same objectives except for under the completed contract approach, but we will combine the calculations of the revenues, expenses, and gross profits for both the percentage of completion and completed contract together. We begin with, again, showing the data as presented. The information that change happens in 2021. Costs incurred in each year this time are 4.9 million in 2021, resulting in an accumulated amount of 5.9 million. And the estimated cost to complete are different in this tutorial. So 4.5 million estimated cost to complete in 2021. Uh, in 2020, nothing changes. So the gross profit under the percentage of completion approach is still 250. And what I meant is that we're covering both the percentage of completion and completed contract sort of on the same panel. And then we'll look at the journal entries and presentation for those uh, requirements under completed contract separately. For journal entries under the completed contract approach for 2020, no change from a fully profitable contract. So all these journal entries are the same as you would have seen in the previous examples. And as well, our balance sheet and income statement for 2020 will also be the same as in all previous tutorials. Accounts receivable has a balance of 75,000. The difference between the CIP and the billings is still 500,000. And the gross profit is 250,000. So now we will continue to the year 2021. Here's where things start to change. Following the same approach and process as we have in the other tutorials, we begin with our cost to date, and our cost to date are $5.9 million, and the estimated cost to complete are an additional $4.5 million, resulting in the total estimated project cost of $10,400,000. Now, if we take the cost to date of 5.9 million divided by 10,400,000, that'll give us a percentage complete of 56.73%. And if we multiply that by the contract price, the revenue to date should be $5,673. And then following the logic as in previous tutorials, we subtract the previous revenue recognized to date of $1,250,000 giving us revenue in the year of 4,423,000. Now, the problem here is that we have a contract that has a price of $10 million, but now our estimated total costs are 10,400,000. Well, this contract is now expected to lose $400,000. So even though based on the normal process to calculate gross profit under the percentage of completion approach, our revenue of 4,423 less our 4.9 million in costs incurred gives us a gross profit for the year of 477,000, and that's a loss. The problem is we have an unprofitable contract as I previously calculated, and the rules require that as soon as we determine a contract to be unprofitable, we have to then take the entire loss on that contract, and if necessary, to reverse any previous gross profit taken on it. So in 2020, we recognized $250,000 in gross profit, 
but if the contract has a loss of 400,000 and in order to make our cumulative profit to date equal to the contract loss we have to basically add another 250,000 to our $400,000 loss in order to come up with what we need in 2021, which is a total loss of 650,000. In order to go from a calculated loss of 477,000 in 2021, I have to take an additional loss of 173,000 so that I end up with the number that I'm supposed to end up with, which is 650,000. So this calculated value here, or a plug, is required to reach the desired $400,000 loss. We can prove that calculation if we take the percentage incomplete. So this 100% minus 56.73 comes from here. That's the incomplete percentage times the contract price minus the expected costs will tell us the loss that we need to report in addition to the costs incurred during the year. Under the completed contract approach, it's a little bit easier. In 2020, we had nothing to worry about. But now in 2021, we still determined that the contract is unprofitable to the tune of $400,000. We did not recognize any previous profit in 2020. So all we need to do in 2021 is recognize a loss of 400,000. So under the completed contract approach, losses are recognized in the year that the uh, loss is first evident. That applies to the percentage of completion approach, but the completed contract approach has no gross profit recognized prior to that. So as soon as the contract is deemed to be uh, unprofitable, that's when we'll have a first value in the gross profit or loss for a particular year. And so now the 2021 journal entries, everything in yellow is what has changed from the original tutorial values. So our construction progress, uh, 4.9 million in cost during the year, accounts receivable for billings, some collections. Then what I've done here is separated into two separate transactions, but it could be done in one journal entry. So this first journal entry here records the revenues and associated gross profit or a loss in this particular case. Based on the numbers calculated, we can recognize 4.42 million in construction revenue and 4.9 million in costs. And so the gross profit or gross loss is a $477,000 as a credit to the CIP account. Then I've got another journal entry here to record the loss on the expected unprofitable contract. Again, this also goes to the CIP account and then it goes to construction expenses or a loss. But generally what we do is take all construction expenses and any losses and just debit them to the construction expense account. These entries could have combined into one. So we could have easily have just combined the 477,000 and the 173,000 and have a net $650,000 credit to the construction in progress. So these two could have been combined into 650,000. Now it's time to review the balance sheet presentation. So for 2021, the balance in our accounts receivable T account, if you go back to the previous slide, is 3.375 million. However, we no longer have a number in here for the recognized revenues in excess of billings. And that's because the balance in the CIP is 5,500,000, but the balance in the billings account is 6,750,000. And that equals 1,250,000 loss. What's happened here is recall that the CIP is the cumulative balance of any costs plus gross profit. And usually what's supposed to happen is the amount of cost plus gross profit, which is revenue, is usually greater than the billings, so that not all of the amount is billed. But in this case, we have a loss. So we have a cost minus a loss, and so that'll be less than revenue. And in essence, the company has billed 1.25 million more than it should have because it's incurring a loss in the contract. And what has to happen is that is classified as a liability, as a non-current liability, billings in excess of recognized revenues. Whenever that happens, if the billings and construction is greater than the CIP account, or conversely, if the CIP is less than the billings, then we have to reclassify the balance as billings in excess of recognized revenue, and that's a liability. If we look at the income statement, what we have here is construction revenue of 4.4 million, 
and construction expenses of five million and seventy three and that is basically the sum of the costs plus the additional contract uh, plus the loss incurred in that period rather than show it separately as an additional loss we can include all of those items so the cost plus loss in the construction expense account. The difference between those should be the gross profit of 650000 in the year that we want. And when we combine those two years together, so $650,000 loss and offset by a profit in 2020 is a $400,000 net loss, which is equal to the anticipated loss on the contract in 2021. And now we move to 2022. So the data change where we had costs incurred during the year, this time of 4.1 million, resulting in costs incurred to date of 10 million and 50. Notice that this number, when you look at the cumulative sum of all of the actual costs, is still greater than the contract price, but actually only ends up losing 50,000 on the contract because the contract price is 10 million and the cost is 10,050,000, leaving us with a $50,000 net loss on the contract. Tracing all this to the current year, our cost to date, 10,050,000, no additional costs to complete the contract. It's 100% complete. Of course, the contract price is 10 million, and multiply that by 100% is 10 million. Subtracting the cumulative revenue to date in the previous year, so 10 million minus 5,673 gives us revenue to recognize of 4,327. And then I have my costs of 4.1 million, giving me a gross profit for the year of 177,000. However, because the actual costs were less than anticipated, we have to recalculate what the contract profit or loss is, and we determine that the contract is still unprofitable to the tune only this time of $50,000. What we must do is determine that the $50,000 unprofitable amount of the contract, so basically we have to go back in time because we need the sum of all years must equal a loss of $50,000. But if we look at where we're at so far, two hundred and fifty. dollars and 650 is $400,000 loss. So in order to end up with a net cumulative loss of 50, I now need 350,000 of gross profit. The company recognized a sizable profit of 250,000 in 2020, then took a huge loss of 650,000 in 2021, and then another sizable profit of 350,000 in 2022. Because uh, the estimate of the costs in 2021 were higher than the actual costs. And there's nothing you can do about that. Management estimates costs, and, and that's all there is to it. The desired ending gross profit for the year is 350000 The amount that I need to go from 177000 gross profit to 350 is an additional 173000 and that happens to be the amount of the additional loss taken in 2021 on the unprofitable contract because uh, there, there was based on our estimate. This here is so simply it's a calculated value required to produce the 350,000 in gross profit. And if we add 177 plus 173, that's 350. And adding all those years together will give us a net loss of 50,000 on the contract. Under the uh, completed contract approach, again, it's fairly simple. So 2020 had zero GP. Uh, 2021 took the full 400,000. And because all three years must end up being a loss of 50, we can recognize positive 350,000 of GP all in one year under this approach. And that's all there is to it for completed contract. Okay, so now for our 2022 journal entries. The yellow shaded areas just indicate what is different in this scenario or model as compared to previous ones. We know that our construction in progress, our costs were 4.15 million, and so that's debited to our construction in progress. The billings numbers were a little different in, in this case, so we have a debit to receivables and a credit to our billings and construction. So here's our receivables and here's our billings for 3.25 million. The cash collections never changed. We've still included them here, but they're not different from where they were before. What is different is this last entry here. This entry is to record the revenue and associated gross profit, as well as the reversal 
of the 2021 loss. So what we have here is a credit to construction revenue for our revenue, 4.327 million. We have a debit to our construction expense of 4,150. If you recall from the previous slide, our gross profit for the year was determined to be 350,000. Now, even though the contract is still unprofitable, overall, the contract nets a $50,000 loss, remember, but because of the large estimate in 2021, we ended up pushing the loss sort of too far. So this gross profit, and I say that loosely, just helps us recover where we went over to end up with a $50,000 loss. These two numbers combined are 350,000. They're both debited to the construction and progress. We could have just put a net 350 in there, which is totally fine, but I wanted to highlight that that number includes the reversal of the previous year loss as well. And that 177 is simply the number, it's just a plug or a calculated number so that we ended up with the correct gross profit in 2022. And then of course, for a general entry to balance, we need to have a credit somewhere and that credit for the reversal uh, actually also goes to construction expenses. In some cases, you could, I suppose, use a loss on contract when the, the loss is discovered and then credit that, but we usually just put all of the costs and uh, losses into construction expenses. And now since we're recovering a portion of that, we can just apply it against the same construction expense account. So really a net uh, number could have been used here of 3,977,000 and that would have accomplished the same thing. At the end of the day, we have a balance in our construction and progress and a balance in the billings and construction of $10 million. This is where we want to be at the end of a contract. You may be wondering, well, how come this balance isn't more because the total cost in the contract were 10,050,000? Well, that's because this number here is a calculated number so that we end up with the gross profit that's necessary to be able to end up with a net $50,000 loss in the contract. And between the revenues and expenses recorded in our income statement, we do end up there. And then the final entry is to eliminate the $10 million balance in each to clear them out. And this entry has appeared every single time regardless of the nature of the contract, fully profitable, profitable with a loss in one year or unprofitable. At the end of the day, these two accounts need to end up being the same. And now finally, our 2022 balance sheet where we're left with an accounts receivable balance of 125,000 and both the recognized revenues in excess of billings and the billings in excess of recognized revenue are cleared out to zero. For our 2022 income statement, we have construction revenue of 4.327 million and net construction expense consisting of the actual construction costs of 4,150,000 and subtracting the 173,000 that was the additional loss that was taken the previous year ends up with 350,000. And as you can see here, we have a proof over all the years. The 2020 profit less the 2021 loss plus the 2022 profit gives us the contract loss of 50,000, which was our contract price, less the 10 million 50 in costs. We will now finish out the tutorial by completing requirement two for Putty Inc. C, which is under the completed contract approach. We have already done the, the A part of requirement two when we illustrated the percentage of completion approach. So this one's completed. All we're going to do now is a look at the remaining requirements B and C, the journal entries and the partial balance sheets and income statements under completed contract. So for the 2020 journal entries, actually there is no change here from the previous tutorials. And we have a net balance in the construction and progress of a million, 75,000 in accounts receivable and billings of 750. And the difference between these two is 250, which is what we should see on our balance sheet. And in fact, that's precisely what we see on the balance sheet. So 250,000 in recognized costs in excess of billings, accounts receivable 75, and no gross profit for the year on the income statement. Looking at our 2021 journal entries, these would be the same as under the percentage of completion approach with the exception of the loss. So we still have the costs, the billing, the collection, but now recall that because no previous gross profit had been recognized and now we're determining that the contract has a $400,000 loss, we have to adjust for all of it. So 
that's where there's a credit to the CIP account. And this particular example here, I've debited the loss on unprofitable contract. I suppose you could also use uh, construction expenses, but because there are no other expenses, a loss on unprofitable contract might be a more appropriate account to put that to. Beyond that, the account's receivable balance is the same as previously. You'll find the 2021 balance sheet looks exactly like the percentage of completion approach because the balances are all the same. And the income statement is a little different, however. Recall that we have no construction revenue recognized because we do not recognize any construction revenue or cost until the end of the project, no expenses, and the $400,000 loss. And the sum uh, over the two years of zero plus a loss of 400, of course, gives us our cumulative $400,000 contract loss, which is what we want. So now we're on to our last set of journal entries for 2022. We have to record the construction costs of 4.15 million, the billings, and of course the collection. Then, uh, if you track all of the ins and outs of the construction and progress account, you'll find that the balance in that account is $9.65 million. And the balance in the billings account is $10 million. So what we have to do is we have to close these accounts out. And so we have not recorded any transactions to recognize any revenue because under completed contract we don't. So now we can recognize the full revenue of $10 million. The balance in the construction and progress consists of all the costs. So that has a balance of $9,650,000 and the billings on construction has a balance of 10 million that's debited and cleared out. Now for our final balance sheet at 2022. Of course, we're left with 125,000 in receivables. We have no revenues or recognized revenue in excess of billings anymore. The contract is complete. Uh, this was a liability last year, but now it is completely zeroed out. And then just to review our income statement, again, we have zero revenues or gross profit recorded in 2020 and in 2021. We have no revenue and no expenses, but we have the loss on the unprofitable contracts. So we have a $400,000 net loss. And then in 2022, we start to make some of that back. We record all of the revenue on the construction project, and then we show all of the expenses. And that construction expense now basically is net of the cumulative loss that's included in this contract. So that ends up with a gross profit of 350,000. But again, if we take zero minus 400 plus 350, that ends up with a $50,000 loss on the contract, which is where we need it to be. So we're using this loss line and the construction expense line to manage that. If we added all years together, then we would have 10 million in construction expenses and if we combine these, we would have 10,050 in construction costs, giving us a net loss of 50,000. So this 10,050 is simply split between construction expenses that are actual expenses and a loss on the contract. And that's exactly what we show here. Adding all the years together, zero minus 400 plus 350 profit is a contract loss of $50,000, and it all works out. So if you're ever unsure, Always look at adding the profit of all years together. Those should end up equaling the contract profit or loss. And if those numbers don't add up, then you made a mistake somewhere along the way. So now we will review some key points to remember. First is that a contract is deemed to be unprofitable if at any time the expected total costs to complete the contract, remember those are the cost to date plus the estimated cost to complete. If those exceed the contract price, you have an unprofitable contract. And so when that happens, a loss must be taken in the year the contract is determined to be unprofitable. And a loss in a single year may exceed the contract loss if the gross profit was recognized in previous years. And so that's what we had here. Even though the loss on the contract was 400,000, this is on the percentage of completion. Finally, if at any time our CIP or construction and progress account is less than the billings account, then what we have to do is reclassify that as a liability. And that's what happened in the second year. Recall we had our construction in progress was less than the billings. So therefore we had an account on the balance sheet as a current liability that was worded as billings in excess of recognized revenue as opposed to recognized revenue in excess of billings. 
So this concludes tutorial 11 on accounting for unprofitable long-term contracts under the percentage of completion and completed contract approaches. We hope you found it useful.